Asian markets are softer as commodities continue yesterday's slide and U.S. futures are flat. ECB officials say there is no time for complacency in Europe. And U.S. markets set to close its best first quarter since 1998. I'm Taylor Schrantz and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Rutherford, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Lindsay Bell from The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Today the markets are taking a bid, you know, after, even though Asian markets are down for the, today, after a couple of companies reported profits that were slowing, and we, we're hearing a little rumbling out of Spain. What is this all, what are you seeing today going into the market? Well, at this point, we're going into the wind down of quarter one. So traders are trying to figure out whether the bid in the market is to keep situations marked up so they can get paid for performance. But what you don't want to start hearing is what you just said, you know, some rumblings out of Spain. We got somewhat of the Greece fiasco out of the way. Mm -hmm. And now the question was, will they need a reorg in Spain, in Italy? Are there more bailouts that need to happen? But at this point, the futures are up a little bit. It's taking it in stride. But I do think that you have to be a bit cautious. Anytime you have, you know, the best quarter in 14 years, you don't want to just start chasing and just start entering and start chasing excitement. So what you want to do is be a bit methodical. And for me, I've been having a, a portfolio approach. Ever since the December 20th gap and go, I've probably on a, uh, had on average about 10, 12 long positions and I've been managing them. So at this point, when you're doing the, the quarter one into quarter two reshuffle, you're not exactly sure whether the strong sector stay strong or if money starts to rotate into the weaker ones for a different type of composure moving forward. So why don't we take a look at the S&P. Let's see where we've been and where we can go. Okay, well at this point, you know, there's no like warning signs yet. So if you look at the chart of the S&P, it's still taking everything in stride. Here's the macro trend that we've been following that we haven't even tested in a long time. Here's the accelerated trend that ignited, like I said, on December 20th. You know, if you look at this trend, it's been followed. It was only really tested once here at that 1340. And then it tried to pull in last week, but it, it tested the 10 and 20 day again and then took off yesterday. You did have some weakness towards the end of the day. Not a big deal. So I would say at this point, if we could end quarter one and go into quarter two and continue to go sideways and digest this big move above 1400, traders are going to have to start re-entering positions, building back. And if I could see us sustaining those levels, I will do so as well. So a couple sectors have been leading the market so far this year. It's been financials, it's been retail, and it's been tech. Um, we've seen a lot of movement out of the bank, banks, especially after they pass the stress test. So where can we go here? Are you, do you own any of the banks? Or are you making new positions in any of the banks? I've, I've had them in my position load since December 20th, you know, most of the time. I started out with JP Morgan. That was the one that I picked early on, and I wrote it for a while. I did sell my JP Morgan recently. We remember Bank of America, we, we traded it from, you know, 8.15 all the way up to almost 10. So it's been a great hold and a great trade. And if you look at the chart of the XLF, you will see that, you know, here, here we go. If you look here, there's been a lot of nice methodical moves. You, you start from, this is the October low. This is when we broke out in the end of the year. You know, we had a nice move up to 15, went sideways. This was a spot that it got a little aggressive where traders made some nice money on this breakout. And since then, it's consolidating again. I do think it needs more time. I still think that we need to prove that the banks will be a spot to be in in quarter two and quarter three. I think as long as we maintain above this 1547 moving sideways, I do think we're going to see higher prices for now. I'm not long any of the banks, but I'd like to buy the pull in and I'm going to focus on some of the key names as we move forward. Let's talk about the quality banks. JP Morgan being one of the best in tier. You know, Stephanie Link at Action Alerts Plus, she's been, you know, she was very interested in this name early on in the year. Um, but they've recently had a nice run up given after passing the, the stress test and announcing a new dividend and a share repurchase program. Um, but so they've caught up to kind of the big five. So where do you sh should it go from here? At this point, I think you should be in tier one. There were times to be in tier two, times to maybe even be in tier three. And, and JP Morgan's been the name to go to. It's been the leader. At this point, I don't own any, but I'd like to buy a dip. I'd like to see the strength continue into the quarter two. So if you look here at the chart, you will see that here he was, you know, this was early on. This is actually when I started buying JP Morgan. And then I added here when, you know, when um, Warren Buffett said he's putting it in his PA. And then some t somewhere in here, I definitely sold some. And I haven't been in JP Morgan during this last part of this move. 
But if you look here, yesterday you had a short-term topping tail, which doesn't mean game over, but it means that you could have a little bit of a rest. So after a lot of buyable strategies into what could be a tiny reversal here, I think selling some is prudent. It's probably up a little bit on this up open this morning. And then I think you could probably buy some back coming into this 4440 area. And if we do see some type of corrective activity in, in the second quarter, this should be an area that holds. This is around 4331. This is when I think some swing traders will get interested. But everyone's waiting for a pullback, and the pullback hasn't happened yet. And people trying to pick a top, they're on the sidelines, and they might have to start chasing. So at this point, know your time frame and just know JP Morgan has been one of the leaders. Another leader has been Goldman Sachs. They, they have some management changes going on there, but that could lead to market share improvements down the road. What do you think from a technical standpoint? Well, Goldman Sachs is like my nemesis. I, I trade it all the time. We were trying to get that breakout, if you remember. It was faulty a bit. And then you had you know, that op-ed piece that, that created some weakness as well. But the weakness of it has been viable. It's just been very choppy. If you look here at Goldman Sachs, take a look at this chart. I'll get this out of the way. It's been pretty methodical also. You know, this is when that earnings report came out and it ignited. It broke this downtrend coming into January. And then, you know, you had a, a nice move that was consolidated. I remember this very well, and you guys probably remember also. I tried to play a breakout right here that got negated. And then if you played this breakout, the next day was that op-ed piece. So it's been a little sloppy. If you've been just buying the dip and holding it, I think it's okay. Yesterday, you did have some weakness, just like in some of the other banks. So at this point, watch this small accelerated uptrend. As long as Goldman Sachs stays above, just say this 124 area, I think short-term momentum traders will stay with it. If we break this 124, 124.80, I do think we see some corrective type activity, and that will also be reflected in some of the other banks. Bank of America has been up almost 75% so far this year. Yesterday got downgraded by Baird, saying that they need to, now that they've passed the stress test, these guys need to show some earnings growth. But other analysts have said that too so far this year and have been wrong. What are the technicals saying? Well, the technicals are saying with this one, you definitely have to be a market timer. You know, last year, if you held your nose and went underwater, you, you got crushed. And if you, know, if you sold it when it broke key levels last year, you had a lot of opportunity coming into this year because technically it started to act better. And if you look here at the chart, you, know, you can see the patterns. This is that downtrend okay, that it wound up breaking in late December. This is when I got interested. I chose this one for a January effect stock and we got a lot more than we bargained for. I think we wrote it up to you know, around 750 or so, sold some. And then you had a nice sideways consolidation, which consolidated that early move. And then, you know, we started going tier one. And those who watch Morning Call know that on this day, when we broke out above this consolidation, I think I was in like tier three. And then, you know, sold some into this move. And now it's consolidating again. The question is, can it consolidate and can it go higher? I was long a little bit yesterday. I sold some just because I want to be a bit more prudent. As long as it stays above this, just say, 950 area, I think that the momentum could stay there for an additional move later this year. But if it starts to break below this low here, and I would say that right there is about 940, you could see some corrective type action. And then I think the dip will be viable. You just don't know or you just want to be too early here because this bank still has a lot to prove. And what about Morgan Stanley? Stephanie Link always says that buy that one. It's the number two bank. Why buy number two when you can buy number one for cheaper? Well, that's uh, definitely correct. You don't need to be in everything, so you might as well be in the best. And Morgan Stanley has been a laggard to Goldman. People started whispering, I think, almost a year ago that they were taking over some of Goldman Sachs' mojo, but it really hasn't happened yet. If you look here at the chart, it's okay. Um, you know, it did have a nice breakout move when it, you know, when it, triggered above this little area here of, of what this little descending channel around 19, 1950. Um, it's still working its way higher. If you look at the, the macro chart here, it's definitely not leading. But I would say, you know, if these banks are any good or if Morgan's any good, it really should not come back below 20. So doing some sideways work above 20, I think would be constructive. And then if it could get above this recent little area, then it could continue. But I do think that you don't need to be in all the banks. What you probably should do is take the leader, JP Morgan, and choose either Goldman or Morgan, or you know, maybe Wells Fargo, if you like that better than JP Morgan. There are different classes of them. So you want to own maybe one or two of them, you know, or just buy one of the ETFs you know, as it tests the 10 or 20 day moving average. So that's how to play the financial sector, which has been a strong sector. After the commercial break, we're going to come back and talk about a sector that has lagged, and that's the oil and energy sector. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage 
of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to In the Trenches. We're going to talk about the energy sector. Scott, what's been going on there? What's the trends we've been seeing so far this week? You've seen some gains with the market, but it hasn't been leading the market. And recently, this group has been breaking down somewhat. If you take a quick look at the OAHs, you know that we had a nice early macro call right around here in December. Okay, it gave you a nice methodical move, went as high as almost like 45. And then once we started to correct the first time, it broke this accelerated trend, giving you a little clue that, you know what, this isn't one of the strongest sectors because look what happened. It came back up, retested it, and now this group is below what has been the, the more macro trend. So if you draw from here, you will see that we broke below it, came back, retested, and yes, that we closed pretty weak. So at this point, this has not been the place to be. If you're in it long term, I still think it's okay. You're just not going to have a lot of alpha here. But at this point, if we break this area of about 4070, the next real support comes in, you know, a little bit closer to 3850. So at this point, we're below the moving averages, and this is not a, a, a group that's just worthy of uh, your money at this particular point. Now, we have seen a little strength, at least from a technical standpoint, in names like ExxonMobil and Apache. Um, what are your thoughts there? XOM has been one of the strongest ones, and I still like the, the price pattern there. I think if this group gets stronger, this is the leader and this is the one you have to go for. If you take a quick look at XOM, you will see here, um, it, it, it actually trades very methodically and you know, with chart patterns. I remember earlier uh, last year, okay, this is when this resistance okay, got resolved to the upside. Look how, look how defined that was. You had a nice move, came back, you know, went a little bit below to retest, and then you had another area that was defined before it rallied, and now it's in this upper channel. Okay, this is my markings a few days ago, thinking that if we could see continued strength, it's going to go. Um, and at this particular point, if it does break above this big resistance area, which comes in around 88, I do think you see continuation. You could be in a tier one now, but wait for this group to get a little bit better. Wait for it to get above that 80, you know, 790, 88 area, and I do think you can get a trade here besides just holding it. So this, to me, is best in breed in that group as of now. And longer term, that's a stock that could benefit from the natural gas e explosion uh, in the U.S. and as the government maybe makes some mandates to use them more often. Um, on the downside, we've seen um, we've seen Schlumberger and Halliburton go lower. So yeah. what do we do with the technicals? This is something that's, that's important because if, if you know these two names, everyone likes to talk about them. Everyone thinks that Schlumberger could do no wrong, Halliburton, because they're like really big time names you know. But if you look at what's really been going on in Schlumberger, I tried to be long this early this year. I got stopped out after trying to buy it for momentum a few times. And now you look back and you could see that technically Schlumberger has not been acting well. And if you look here at SLB, you will see that, you know, just like the OAHs, you know, it had a nice move. Okay, this was from the lows. This is when it kind of held that, up, that, that uptrend and tried to go methodically to the upside. I remember playing this right around here, you know, thinking that it would break out with some power, that it would get above this area, and it, it tried to go and couldn't. It then broke below the support level, held the macro trend. Okay, see, it was holding the macro trend, and now it broke below, and yesterday closed in the lows. So for this one, I think it's an avoid until we see some kind of reversal pattern. It's also below the moving averages. So this says that this one is being actually distributed versus accumulated, so we need to see if that does change into quarter two or quarter three because you know we need to figure out which sectors to go to. And right now, for Q1, there's been gains in the oil service arena, but there hasn't been the power like we've seen, obviously, in retail, tech, and the financials. So why don't we move on to our quick hits, and why don't we start with Baidu. The stock, the average analyst price target is 188. I think it's at 140, 140 now. Um, a lot of people talk about this as an early stage Google. Where can it go? <laughs> it early stage. It, it's had a, a great run since it's been public, and we talked about Baidu last week, and that 140 price target she, with that 140 price she was talking about was the trigger buy. And since it triggered above 140 last week, it went as almost as high as, I think, 150 and change. If you look at the chart here, you will see, you know, there are entries and exits. This was your entry when it broke this downtrend. We talked about it so many times. It wound up hitting the resistance zone that we drew. So at this particular point, I'm going to avoid Baidu, let it 
go sideways. And if it could prove to hold this uh, 148.50 area, we could see some more upside follow through. But for right now, I think that the, the short term target has been met. I think that you could you know, make a little cash flow back and forth, but I don't think you can see any big moves here in Baidu. I think it's just an avoid. How about Google? They're trading close to the 52 week high. So where do we go? <laughs> Google, I've had a love-hate relationship with it this year. You know, it was my stock of the year coming into 2012, the way it was set up technically, and then they had a faulty earnings report. But for a macro investor that took it into earnings, you know, it held the 200-day, you could have bought more, and now it's been acting a bit better. If you look here at Google, you will see, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This is when, you know, I really loved it. This is when it looked like if it was gonna break out, and it did. It broke out above this area and went as high as almost 665. And then it came in real hard, so someone knew something going on with those earnings. Here was your earnings date. Then it, it triggered and went to the downside. It held support. If you held during earnings, that means you're a macro investor. That means you take risk. So you could have bought more here. Here's your little trade into the gap. And then you had this sideways trend here that it triggered above around 627. And now if you take a closer look here at Google, I think you know it, at this point it's tough to buy as you saw a little bit of a push through failure. Some might be even looking for a cute little short because it does seem as if this could retest the 635 area, but I do think for an investor, the highs of the year are not in, and we're gonna see above 700 at some particular point. What about Apple? They <laughs> hit a new high yesterday. It's really getting difficult looking at the, the broad overview of this chart to, to get really involved, but the valuation is still cheap. Valuation is still cheap, and I think as an investor, you could still own it, so you have to know your time frame. Yesterday I came in long and then I figured it would trade through that high of 609 and change. So I talked about a strategy to buy more through that high and then I sold it into strength above 612. And now I'm flat Apple. It's up above yesterday's high. So as a trader and as a quick hit, if you look here, you know, I might look for a cute short. It's up three bucks. If I see some kind of divergence, maybe I will short it for it to fill the gap. You know, this was the last little buyable strategy here. I bought it added to it through the high. It closed well yesterday, it's up a little bit. I think that it's a little tough to initiate right here as a trader in Apple, but as an investor, I think you stay the course, I, I think maybe 700 plus at some particular point this year. Not too shabby. No, not at all. <laughs> what about Netflix? Uh, that stock had a nice run last week. It's been flat this week. Um, where can it go? Do you wait for a pullback to buy? Well, Netflix has been one of those, you know, actually it was the best stock so far tradable this year. You know, at 75, it ignited. It had a move from 75 to almost 130. I talked about that on Bloomberg. And on a short-term basis, it's actually just consolidated a little bit. So I'm actually going to look at this today. If you look here at Netflix, you'll see the chart. You'll see that, um, you know, stock obviously was very, very, this was the, the, the buyable price pattern here. This is when I talked about it. This is when it ignited. And I said, you know, it put it back on the radar from over 250, 300 last year, down at 75. Maybe someone's trash is my treasure and it proved to be. And here was your first move. And then you had a move to the topping tail, which we talked about, you know, which was 131. And then you had this nice descending channel. If you remember last week on the price point sheet, we had 111-ish. And since then, you had a move to 120. So now if you take a closer look here, we'll get it really, really close so you can see it. This is where we're at. Okay, so at this particular point, I have no position in Netflix. Some people think that this move might correct a bit. So if it were to start breaking below this 120.50, you could see a move back to retest the moving average around 117. If it holds in there and starts getting above this 123, perhaps it continues to the upside. So for me, I'm, I'm not sure which way it's gonna go. I'm gonna look at the action, but below yesterday's low could be a cute little short for a quick hit. But if it resumes its uptrend or resumes and gets above this, it'll be a quick hit for a cash flow to the long side. But right now, I think on a macro basis, you know, it, I would just sit tight. And then finally, Family Dollar. This morning, they reported earnings that were pretty decent. They were two cents above the street consensus estimate. And, you know, they keep driving traffic with the um, with expansion into consumable items like food and healthcare. What's the technicals telling us though? Well, yesterday before earnings, since a lot of people are risk averse and they don't want to take it, it had some weakness. So if you look at the chart here on, on FDO, it, it went from the high to the low. So, you know, some people get out of it. I looked at it this morning, it's down a little bit. I think at this particular point that it, you know, people like this, it's above the moving averages. It's kind of close to the highs, but you still have, you have like a high, lower high, lower high, and now this is a bit of a reversal. I would say as long as it holds above these moving averages, above 57.44, I think it continues to the upside since the report was solid, just not blockbuster. Mm -hmm. But at this point, you know, it could come in, and I don't think it's that sexy right here. So just you know, be a bit careful unless you're a big time fan of it and you want to hold it for the long term. 
So that's a few thoughts on how we can you can think about entering Q2. Um, mm. Any final thoughts from you? Yes, I, I think that this is a tricky time. I know a lot of people have, you know, shorts on the brain in my whole Twitter feed. I feel like for the last three weeks, everyone's just trying to short the market, you know, instead of embracing it. Because if you embrace the market right now, you will see different price patterns, different charts triggering in all different sectors. So it's been very rewarding. If you held, you know, a lot of positions for the quarter and you enjoyed the gains, don't get sloppy. Don't get overconfident. Don't just start buying things because you've had nice gains. What you do is you, you stay on the same path and, and get, you know, make further steps the same way you, you got here, okay? And at this point, I know for me, I took a lot of risk off yesterday. I came in long like 12 positions and I have a lot less. I'm gonna let the market prove to me what type of direction we're gonna go in Q2, which sectors are gonna be worthy of being long or short. And I think overall, if we can have a sideways quarter in, in, in the second one, because I'm, I don't think we have the, the same type of gains we had in the first, overall it'll be healthy and that would help set up higher highs in the third and fourth quarter because I don't think the highs of the year are in, but you have to trade these markets if you approach it with a momentum style. But if you're a macro investor, I would stay the course because overall, I think in the next two to three years, we're going to see S&P 1700. So if you missed the market from the last uh, year or two of gains, you know, don't say I'm never looking at it again because you could still approach it with a plan and benefit moving forward. All right. <laughs> and uh, follow us in the recap later in the day. We'll talk about what worked and how we're positioned. Um, and good luck trading.